Good morning everyone. Just a little background on who I am. Even though I do usually respond to whoever looks at me <laughs> um, and just says a name. My name is Margo and I am one of the Botany Honours students from NMU and this is my first project for the year. Supervised by Dr. Stain over there, co-supervised by Professor Campbell. My project is looking at the populations of Euphorbia polygona in the Nelson Mandela Bay area to determine whether they are different enough to be protected individually. <laughs> the Euphorbia polygona species forms part of a morphological complex that where recently Euphorbia horrida was synonymized with Euphorbia polygona. Further revision was done, in, infra specifically, where at least eight varieties have been tax are now taxonomically accepted. These were more largely based on morphologic studies, where essentially each of these varieties will be differentiated by, by essentially the inflorescences, where the capsules the color of the capsules, the cyathea, the thorns, um, the size, the distribution, all those things were considered in the classification infra specifically. The study sites that were chosen to conduct this, well, for the study were the Barkins Valley, Van der Kemp School of Nature Reserve, and the Groot School of Nature Reserve, where Polygona is found. It's, it's distribution is from Ladysmith up to about Grahamstown, or now known as Maganda, and these euphorbs really, really love scree slopes. We Sampling was a lot of fun, and I must just point out that my supervisor, <laughs> Dr. Stein, was absolutely amazing when we went on our sampling trips. Um, but I must also point out that this is a project that is still in progress. Essentially, uh, this project, of course, aims to place these populations within this classification system. And an observation made by Wesley Beddington was that the Euphorbia polygona population or individuals found within the Van der Kemp School of Nature Reserve are smaller in size in comparison to the rest found in Nelson Mandela Bay or in, or, or in total. The vegetation types found at these reserves as per the NMBM vegetation map by Stuart 2007, places Van der Kemp's Kloof and Groot Kloof were in the Bethelsdorf Bornfeld, and the Barkins Valley was in the Barkins Forest Thicket. The national veg map also places Groot Kloof and Van der Kemp's Kloof within the Bethelsdorf Bornfeld and the Barkins Valley within the um, Algoa Sandstone Fainbos. The, um, I will never claim to be an expert on this, but as per the definition given by Professor Campbell on what Bornfeld is, um, Bornfeld is essentially supposed to be clumps of thicket within a matrix of two or more other biomes, and these are what the sites look like. So we have these dense, thick thicket patches that well, with sharp boundaries into fainbos, and then these scree slopes with pretty much nothing really on it other than my lovely UFOs and some rock. Mm -hmm. So I will leave that that one for for the debate afterwards because I can see my co-supervisors boiling on the inside over there. <laughs> When we went out into the field, of course, my experimental design started with my morphologic work, where the number of stems on each individual were counted. The length of the five longest stems were taken. 
as well as the diameter of the longer stem. I took the top 30 centimeters of these individuals back to the lab, where I then looked at the pith, the cortex, and also took some samples for DNA analysis to use um, molecular data to also place these within these classification systems. <laughs> there we go. So far, I've only looked at my morphological results. I have extracted DNA, but I will get to that shortly. And essentially, looking at these, um, we don't have a dwarf in van der Kemskloof. Because our van der Kemskloof populations, in terms of their maximum height, their diameter, it's insignificantly different to the Barkins Valley population. But what we did find, to our surprise, is that the Groetkloof population is actually much larger than the other two. So we don't have a dwarf form. We essentially have a giant form. So I guess perspective is an important one in this, in this regard. The rest of the morphological characters that I looked at will essentially be able, will assist in placing these within the classification system, infra specifically, which I currently don't have access to, but I am working on it. If anyone is a member of the International Euphorb Society, please, please help me out. <laughs> The second part of my experiment will then be classifying this on a molecular scale where um, I have prepared my samples in a variety of ways by freezing, well, it's actually, if we can go back to this picture, when prepping this for DNA extraction, this latex was absolutely a nightmare to work with. So taking that particular section there with a scalpel, precision, and a lot of time. Those are essentially the sections that I prepped for DNA extraction and then of course removing most of, trying to remove the cuticle as well because these um, metabolites or protective mechanisms do interfere with the buffers used in, my, in the DNA extraction process and I really took special care to not get any of that in there. So, of course, specimens were prepped. I have successfully uh, extracted DNA thus far, and in this week or so, I will then be using PCR to amplify it, and then I'll send it to for sequencing. Um, the gene regions that I'm looking at for this particular project will be NDHF and ITS, and these two are particularly good for resolving on a specific level and can infer information for infraspecific classification as well. These sequences obtained from this will be compared to those that are already available on databases such as GenBank and BOLD, and this, the sequences obtained from the study will then be placed in a phylogeny along with the sequences that are already available, as well as a genetic distance matrix to determine how different the species are, or the, the percentage of difference between the species, and this will then allow me to determine how different these varieties are as well. The outputs from this project will, of course, be to place Euphorbia polygona within its complex and classify it, hopefully, to an intraspecific level of variety. And this, these sequences obtained from the study will be uploaded to the GenBank server, and that could be used in other research projects in the future, because it's, of course, open access and anyone will have access to it. And this will allow for the pro the appropriate protection and conservation, if need be, 
for these populations within the Nelson Mandela Bay area. To end off, I would really love to acknowledge my supervisor and my co-supervisor for all their assistance and their help during my project thus far. Um, of course, NMU, the NRF, and Mr. Clyde Scott from the conservation, from who's the director of the Kruikloof and from the Kemsloof Nature Reserve for all their assistance. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.